Welcome to Android Worldwide 2021. Today, my talk will be about the new recommended Jetpack Register for Activity Result API. But first, let me introduce myself. Hello, uh, my name is Madonna Siombuo Wambua. I have three names. And funny enough, my two names, Siombuo and Wambua, they both mean rain in my language. And yeah, I think I love the rain. <laughs> so I am an Android engineer three at Stream Frontom. I also won the Grow with Google Scholarship back in 2018. And I was able to launch Budgeting Buddy, which is a free budgeting tool. It's on the market store and it doesn't have any ads. I love it just for learning purposes. I'm also a current student at Samo Jin and um, I volunteer for Women Who Code Mobile and recently just became a Women Tech Maker Ambassador. Let's get started. So what is it and why did I want to talk about this and why exactly this API? Okay. It took me a bit to wrap my head around this new API for sure, but I can say it's pretty sleek, especially when used from a consuming app and what a better way to pass your data between activities. If you've been, if you've been building Android applications, you've indeed used the start activity for result in one way or the other. Also, now, if you don't, if you didn't know the start activity for result has been deprecated and now the reason for why we need the new method. Why? You would be wondering why exactly. So when starting activity for result, it is possible. And in case of memory instance operations, such as camera usage and any other, that your process and your activity will be destroyed due to low memory. And for this reason, the activity results APIs decouples the results callback from the place in your code where you launch the other activity as a result callback needs to be available when you process the activity are created and recreated. Oops, sorry, can you see my screen? Uh, okay, sorry, so something went by. <laughs> One minute. No more technical difficulties. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing one minute and come back share again. Just one minute. Okay. Sorry about that. And um, As you can see, this is the old deprecated start activity for result. And that's an example of how we used it or you used it before. And furthermore, as we as we know, passing data and getting responses between two activities are the most common things we do during the development phase for the longest time. And the, currently, the only way to get responses back from the activity, from, from the next activity is passing intent and request and request code through start activity for result. And after that, we have to check the request and the request code, the result code before passing responses on an activity result. And maybe some of you agree that when the app grows, there'll be a lot of nested ifs, the code, and that becomes very tightly coupled. In comes the new API. So what you need to do first is add the new dependencies, as you can see. Uh, we have the new KTX fragment and activity KTX. And um, currently, so what I decided to do, I learned this, especially I wanna just give props to my company stream. Frondo, this is where I actually learned all this stuff. I love my company, <laughs> we are great people. And I was able to just pick the ideas just through looking into it and applying it on my application that I use, the budgeting buddy, because I was using the previous one. And now because it's deprecated, I wanted to test it. And as you can see in my code sample, first don't forget to add your cradles, that's for sure. And then when you create a result contract, by, you create your result contract by extending an abstract class called activity result contract, which as you can see, takes in two parameters, the I and O. I mean, type of input O, 
type of input and O means type of output, sorry. And then you only need to override two methods. And um, as you can see here, after, oh, sorry, let me just go slowly here. As you can see what we've done, we have the post budget contract, which has an activity result contract, which takes in a string, an integer and a string. And um, inside our override fund, we do the past result, result code, da, 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 da. and then we get the activity, the budget activity dot title. So definitely I picked little snippets of the code, but I will share I will share a link to where you can find the entire code just to look at the exact the complete example. Finally, as you can see here inside my class main activity, what I've done is I've gone there. I know you can use this inside a fragment, but I've used it in my activity because this is where before I used to have it leave, but I will definitely look in to see if I can move it to a fragment. But as you can see there, I have um, the last step is registering the contract to the activity and you need to pass your custom contracts and call back into, into the register for activity result. It is also fair to say there's more like pre-built contract for rescue surprising for, for rescue surprisingly google provides pre-built contracts that can commonly be used for tasks such as start activity for result request multiple permission request permission take pictures and the documentation definitely guides more on how you can use it if you're into testing and you're wondering, like me, how would you test this or how would you get this tested? So as you can see by default, register for activity result automatically uses the activity result registry provided by the activity. It also provides an overload, an overload that allows you to pass in your your own instance of activity result registry that can be used to test your activity results call without actually launching another activity. So when testing, so when test when testing your apps fragment, you need to just provide and look into the fragment factory to pass in the activity registry. And surprisingly enough, I'm working on a similar concept at work, but because it's not that easy as it seems always, <laughs> it kind of like definitely you get to learn a lot when you try new apis and yeah this was a lightning talk finally yay you're able to upgrade to the new activity result which offers an easier way to do a lot of common tasks especially request permission take pictures take photos so we don't need to relay or not any other third party libraries anymore and beside that, it also simplifies the old implementation that makes the code loose coupling and improves reusability and it's easier to test. And I will say, thank you. So here's where you can get, I've linked, I'm gonna share this, the, the slides where you can actually read more on what it does and the docs. And then as you can see, I will upload some of the tutorials that I did on my YouTube and also on the GitHub where I'll share the code on the examples I did today. And that was it. Thank you very much. All right. Oh, man, that was just like perfectly short and sweet. It hit the spot. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a lightning talk. <laughs> wanted to make sure I'm on time. Um, if anybody has questions, uh, please write them in the Q&A section. Um, give you a couple minutes to pop some. Otherwise, Madonna, are you going to have time to hang out after and just chat with people? If they have... Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome, yeah. And I think we're going to have a little bit of a break. Uh, what, it's 6.18? Oh, mm -hmm. I'm on my time. Oh, yeah. We have a good, like, 20, 25-minute break. Oh, yeah, I think I was actually right on time, 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, it was perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, first question. Okay, that's a pretty interesting question. If I open screen, maybe. 
So the new API works well if I open screen B from screen A and trigger some events, right? How can we use this new API for opens for open screen B from other places, i.e. notification? And when back to screen A, how to trigger some events? I like to that's a pretty interesting question. I can definitely look into the documentation and see how I can use that. Because I I feel like I don't understand the pattern it says from screen API open screen B from other places, a notification. Okay. So it's like when you're launching a notification or you receive so in the notification, maybe I would ask, are you using any kind of or is it the inbuilt notification or a third party, like let's say Firebase? Because I know there's like the Firebase system that helps with the notifications too. Would it help if we invited JC on stage? Oh sure, definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, definitely. That seems to be an option. Yeah. I've never done this before. This is new. <laughs> Let's see. And JC, if you don't want to come up, definitely feel free not to. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no pressure here. All right, no worries. All right. So, if you guys want to speak about it afterwards, like uh, at one of the tables. Oh I yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> this is also new to me. I'm experimenting with it. And definitely, what a better way to share where you learn to and yeah. teach and you learn with others. <laughs> okay, so can I hide that? Doesn't seem like there are more questions. So, thank you so much, Madonna. That was wonderful um, and insightful. Quick, mm -hmm. I liked it. Um, all right, so we're going to head back into a break. We can all hang out at tables um, and chat. Uh, see you guys all in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.